Today we'll be reading You Are Badass by Jen Sincero, Chapter 2. Chapter 2. The G Word. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Nikola Tesla, inventor, and such. So when I lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico, my friends and I used to hang out with this western bar called Midnight Rodeo. It was kind of the place that had curling irons and hairspray in the women's bathroom, but light on the permanent special for two bucks a can, and a solid oak dance floor the size of a cornfield. <laughs> we were all from the East Coast and were way too cool for country music. So at first, we'd go just to silently make fun of it all, taking great pride in being the first to spot a particular gi gigantic belt buckle or a cowboy sporting one of them handlebar mustaches big enough to cover five upper lips. But our favorite part was the line dancing. We'd stare mesmerized by the giant choreographed mass of Garth Brooks fans stomping around and synchronizing Woo Hori uh, with their thumbs uh, purposely tucked into the front pockets of their jeans. It was so hilarious that we started joining in ourselves, waving from the middle of the sea of cowboy hats to our friends, watch this! Then, oh, uh, we'd stay on the floor for the next song, just to try and get that part down where you click your heels right before you spin. Then we found ourselves sneaking off every weekend to merrily line dance our little achy breaky hearts out. And this was sort of the same way the God thing happened for me. It started out with such smirkness and eye rolling, but I was so broke and clueless and sick of being such a weenie about really going for it in my life that I was open for suggestions. Which is why when I started reading books on finding your calling and making money and getting over yourself already in, they all had this spiritual side to them. I didn't toss them to the goodwill pile, but my usual, this god spiritual crap is for suckers attitude. Instead, I decided to give good old god a chance because I had nothing to lose. Literally, and <laughs> lo and behold, some of it wasn't totally idiotic. So I started reading more about it then I started studying it, and then I started to practice it. Uh, then I noticed how much better it made me feel. Then I started believing it. Then I noticed all these awesome shifts starting to happen in my life. Then I became obsessed with it. Then I started loving it. And then I started radically changing my life with it. Then I started teaching it. Now, you know, I'm basically riding me the mechanical bull about it, punching my fist in the air and hollering to the guy mannering the controls, hit it, Wayne. Wherever you happen to stand on the God issue. Well, let me just say that this whole improving your life thing is going to be at a lot, be a lot easier if you have an open mind about it. Call it whatever you want, God, Goddess, the big guy, the universe, source energy, higher power, the grand, uh, Buddha, uh, gut, intuition, spirit, the force, the zone, the lore, the vortex, the mother load. It doesn't matter. Personally, I find the God word to be a tad too loaded. I prefer source energy, the universe, the vortex, spirit. Um, the mother lord, um, all of which I use interchangeably throughout this book, FYI. Um, whatever you choose to call it isn't important. What it 
is important is that you start to develop an awareness and a relationship with the source energy that's surrounding you and within you, which is all the same energy and which will be your best pal ever if you give it a chance. Because here's one thing, our energy is taking a joyride in these bottle bodies we call ours, learning, growing, evolving along the way. One would hope anyway, I suppose, and numbing, shrinking, and moving back in with your parents is also an option until our corporal journey comes to an end and we move on. Thanks for the list. This realization that we're made up of and connected to source energy made me want to have a deeper understanding of spirituality so I could make my physical experience as awesome as possible. And let me tell you, ever since I got into it, it has been awesome to the maximum. When I'm connected with source energy and it, in the flow, I'm so much more powerful so much more in tune with my physical world and the world beyond and just so much you know happier in general and the more i meditate and the more attention i give to this relationship with my invisible superpower the more effortlessly i can manifest the things i want into my life and do it with such specificity and at such a rapid rate that it makes my hair stand up. It's like I finally figured out how to make my magic wand work. If loving spirit is wrong, I don't want to be right. Okay. Here's the uh, foundation for all the work you about to do together on your life. One, the universe is made up of source energy. Two, all energy vibrates at a certain frequency, which means you're vi vibrating at a certain frequency and everything you desire and don't desire is also vibrating at a certain frequency. Three, vibration attacks, attracts like vibration. Otherwise known as the law of attraction, the basic idea is focus on that which makes you feel good and ye shall find or attract that which makes you feel good. We're all attracting energy to ourselves all the time, whether we realize it or not. And when we're vibrating at a low frequency, feeling pessimistic, needy, victimized, jealousy, shameful, worried, convinced, we're ugly. Yet expect high frequency, awesome things and experiences to come our, into our lives, we're, we are often disappointed. We need to raise our frequency to match the vibration of the one you want to tune into. It's like trying to listen to a certain radio station but tuning in at the wrong frequency. If you have a hot and sexy date and want to listen to 105.9 FM slow jams, but set your daily to 89.9 FM national public radio, you're not only going to slow jam list, but you're more likely to attract a discussion about immigration laws in the US instead of attracting a relaxed and candlelit body that is in the mood for love. Which is why when you're vibrating at a high frequency, Awesome things seem to throw, flow to you effortlessly and you seem to stumble over the perfect people and opportunities all the time and vice versa. As Albert Einstein observed, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. When you learn to uh, consciously master the energetic realm, believe in the not yet seen and stay in your highest frequency, you harness your innate power to create the real reality you desire. So once again, good old awareness is a key to freedom. Once you realize that you can dramatically improve your situation by connecting with source energy and raising your frequency, you can freaking do it already. I'll show you exactly how later. Instead of 
opting to stay in the suck hole and feeling like a victim of pathetic circumstances such as microwaving ramen in its styrofoam cup for dinner or working for someone who makes your flesh crawl. It's like we're surrounding, surrounded by this big all-you-can-eat buffet of incredible experiences and insights and feelings and opportunities and things and people and ways to share our gifts with the world and all we have to do is align our energy with what we want to take decisive action to allow this good into our lives and this decisive action part is key Sadly, we can't just float around our neighbor's pool on a raft with uh, cup holders, even though I wish I could. You know, sipping cocktails and being all high frequency while waiting for unicorns to fly down from the sky. We have to take action, help bent for glory kind of action. The trick is to have both parts, energy and action, working in unison, unless your energy is lined up properly with that which you desire, really desire, any action you take is going to require way more effort to get you where you want to go. If it gets you there at all, once in a while you may get lucky doing one without the other, but if you get very clear on what you truly want rather than what you think you should want, believe that it's available to regardless of your present circumstances. By staying connected to source energy and keeping your frequency high and take decisive action, you will eventually succeed. Have you ever had a dream where you're flying and you're having such a blast, but then you realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm flying. I can't fly. And then you come crashing back down to the ground and you can't get yourself back up again, no matter what you try. This is the way beliefs work. Even it seems impossible, you have to have faith any way. And the second you stop believing, you pop the bubble and stop attracting, attracting the magic in your life. The force is with you. This isn't just believing and being all high vibe when the sun is out and the bunnies are hopping around either. This is about believing, even when things are at their most uncertain or absolute crappiest, that there is a bright, shiny flip side within your reach. As French art author and fearless truth seeker Andre Giedig so adroitly put it, one does not uh, discover new land without consenting to lose sight of the shore for a very long time. This is about believing that we will live in a loving, kind, and abundant universe instead of one that's petty, mean, and likes other people more than it likes you. This is about your faith being greater than your fear. All right, guys, that was chapter two of You Are a Badass. Stay tuned for the next chapter. Bye.